Today for Mouse Trap Monday, we're gonna try something that I've never done before on my YouTube channel, and that is test out a rat poison. It's called Rat X for the effective control of rats and mice. I bought the larger bag on Amazon. It's a full three pounds. You can also buy a smaller bag. They sell it in trays, and they sell another product called Mouse X. But looking at the ingredients and the pellet size, it's pretty much the exact same thing, just with a different name on the bag. Now, if you've watched my YouTube channel for a while now, you know for the most part, I've been against using poison for several reasons, but the number one is safety. When you're placing mouse or rat poison around your house, your kids, your pets might accidentally get into it. That would be really bad. But also you might unintentionally kill wild animals. One thing I've shown in my videos is a lot of animals love to eat the mice and rats we catch in traps. The list is pretty long. We've seen everything from cats and weasels to skunk, opossum, raccoon, gray fox, coyote, bobcat, hawks, and even owls. So this whole idea about how rat or mouse poison can enter the food chain can be seen very clearly in a poster by the National Park Service. So with all the safety concerns around using rat poison, why am I testing out Rat X? Well, first of all, they claim this product has no secondary kills and is safe to use around people, pets, and wildlife. Right here on the package, it says for the effective control of rats and mice, formulated for indoor and outdoor use, non-toxic rat and mice control, 100% naturally derived, and safe for use around livestock and pets. Now I'm wondering what it's made up of if it's non-toxic but still kills mice. Let's look at the ingredients. For the active ingredients, the majority of this product at 55% is made of corn gluten meal and sodium chloride, also known as table salt, at 2%. For the inert ingredients, there's maltodextrin, which is made of vegetable starch and easily digestible, and sorbitol, a sugar alcohol with a sweet taste. There's wheat flour and wheat germ oil. With the ingredients being all natural, that's probably why it says down here on the label, this product is exempt from registration with the federal EPA. And as such, it's not registered with the Environmental Protection Agency. So if it's so safe that they don't even have to list it as a pesticide, how can it still kill mice and rats? To answer that question, let's take a look at the product description listed on Amazon. It claims Radex works due to the unique digestive system all rats and mice possess. It kills by coating their stomach lining and eliminating all messages to the brain to drink water. Within a day or two of feeding, dehydration leads to blood thickening and circulatory collapse. They become lethargic and retreat to their burrows where they lapse into a coma and die. This is a very humane method of death. The rat or mouse never feels any pain or discomfort. They simply fall asleep. There's an absence of smell due to a mummification process, eliminating up to 90% of odor. That's really handy if they die in the wall or under your house. But some of this sounds too good to be true. Let's take a look at the reviews on Amazon. Uh-oh, not the best. 38% the majority had one star. 32% had five stars and the others are in between. So it looks like people either loved it or hated it. Let's read what they said. One star, don't buy this. The rat has been eating the poison, but is still alive. And they included a picture of a rat feeding. And five stars, just started using this product this weekend and it's working. And they showed a picture of a dead rat. And as you scan down, you read more of the same. Five stars, it really works on rats, big rats. Or one star, rats don't eat it. With so many mixed reviews, I'm curious what my experience will be with Rat X. I'm gonna set it up in the chicken coop. There we have a huge rat problem. And every night, over two dozen rats come and pig out. So tonight, we're gonna come and switch it up and place the bait. The first question is, will they eat it or ignore it? And then for the next week, we'll leave the trail cameras out and see if the numbers go down. So let's go put out the bait and see if we can make some rat mummies. Here's the feeding station we're gonna place our bait on. I'm gonna call it the dinner plate. We'll just fill up the rat X. Now these rats like sunflower seeds, so I'm gonna sprinkle it in, mix it up a little. We'll go ahead and set up the motion cameras and see if they eat the bait.
Okay, here's a look at the dinner plate after night one. It looks like they had a feast. Almost two of the three pounds of rat bait are gone. I'm gonna leave it out, see if they come back tonight and finish it off, or see if we start seeing dead rats. After the second night, there's still quite a bit of bait left. Hopefully that means they all had a chance to eat a lethal dose. And if things are going well, they're starting to feel the effects of the bait. They're down in their burrows, slipping into a coma and dying a peaceful death. We're gonna keep the trail cameras on for one more week to see if the numbers are down. We're gonna look for any signs of dead rats. So here's the latest update. It's been a full week since I put out the bait and there's still some left. The number of rats showing up on the trail camera dropped significantly. That first night when they ate it, I had over 300 clips on my trail camera, but for the last week I only got 20 clips and they were single rats coming by and running past. So just based on the trail camera footage, it looks like it worked. But to know for sure, I'm going to start digging up rat burrows. In theory, they should be underground dead. So we're going to get the shovel, start digging and see if we can find some rats. You can feel it's really soft because of the tunnels. Once I started digging, it didn't take long to find dead rats down in the burrow. So I think the rat eggs were quite well. Now on the trail cameras, after that first night where they feasted on the bait, I saw rat activity decrease by over 95%. Now the reason I think I got such good results is I put out bait for a week before. I placed sunflower seeds and every rat in the area got comfortable coming and eating. Then when I changed the bait, I mixed some of the old bait in there. They still felt comfortable and ate a full dose. But I am a little cautious. They didn't have to register this product with the EPA. Under registration, there's a lot of scrutiny, testing, and I'm not sure if it's truly safe for wildlife. We just have to take their word for it. Okay, question and answer time. The number one question I received on my last YouTube video had to do with the new COPPA rules. And people want to know how this is going to affect my channel. Well, if you don't know what COPPA is, it's a federal law that has recently developed into a huge problem for YouTube and creators. There's been policy changes and so many creators are fearful about the future. There's a lot of uncertainty and I'm the same way. I have no idea how this is going to affect my channel. COPPA stands for the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. It was passed back in 1998 with bipartisan support. And back then the idea was if kids under the age of 13 put their personal information online, their name, address, phone number, it could be used to harm them. A much bigger problem is online companies could track the activities of kids known as cookies, save that information, and use it to target ads for them. Now YouTube has always been a site for adults. In the terms of service, you have to be over the age of 13 to have an account. Originally it was even started as a dating site. Well, the FTC felt YouTube was violating COPPA by trying to have it both ways. YouTube claimed the only people with accounts had to be over 13 years old, but clearly in their marketing, they were targeting kids under 13. Now the settlement between the FTC and YouTube not only cost $170 million, but it also meant that YouTube had to make changes and those are the changes affecting creators. So yes, I'm very concerned about the future of my YouTube channel with these policy changes how the algorithm is going to classify my videos. I went back through my video playlist and deleted a few videos featuring my kids and I listed a few videos as made for kids, even though I don't think they are, just to play it safe. 
Over the past two years, I've seen a lot of turmoil with YouTube and how it's affected my channel, but I'm optimistic about the future. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider clicking the button right here. I've posted over 550 videos on YouTube and currently I'm posting new videos every Monday. So if you wanna see the best videos on how to catch or poison mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers, stay tuned.